Okay guys, what's up? It's Kaze here. Um, so the other day I was talking to my friend, John, about the Hardys versus Edge and Christian in one of their classic matches. And I was telling him about a bump that one of the Hardys took. He's not too hip on the wrestling lingo, so he understandably so thought I was referring to drugs. So that inspired me to make this video. Um, I just want to kind of explain some of the top 10 or maybe even top 12 most commonly used wrestling terms and phrases. I feel like that'll help a lot of people out just helping them get integrated into the wrestling community whether you've been out of it for a while or you're just getting into it for the first time I think that you know this just helps us all be on the same page as far as communication goes so enjoy the video All right, so number one on the list, we have kayfabe. Kayfabe is essentially the canon of whichever promotion you're watching. So things like rivalries or relationships that you see on camera, that's kayfabe. That's canon within the WWE universe or the AEW universe or Impact universe. A big name when I think of kayfabe would be The Undertaker. He has never broken kayfabe for 20 years. I mean, as of recently, he has since he's retired. But before retirement, he had not broken kayfabe. You'd never seen him like as Mark Calloway. He was always The Undertaker if you saw him. So big props to him and shout out to a great career because it was awesome. Okay, guys. So next we have heels and baby faces this is kind of a two for one they go hand in hand so the heels are the bad guys portrayed in the storyline and the baby faces or face for short these are the good guys that you're going to want to cheer for now both sides are very important so no good story is told with a protagonist that you don't care about and an antagonist that you do care about you have to care about the two sides you know what i mean so having one or the other that you don't really care about kind of not good for a good story so it's very important that both sides are made to look strong or at least believable you know what i mean just in the sense of i can root for this guy and i don't want this guy to win now there are a few cases where some wrestlers kind of are made to look like they jump ship a lot uh we have the big show for instance i would say he has turned heel or face about 40 times within his career maybe over no exaggeration and on the women's side of things we have tamina who has also turn face and heel throughout her career this kind of ruins the credibility of the character so i personally can't stand when they do that i know a lot of people don't as well it's best to keep the character mostly on one side or the other a lot of turns kind of makes the character not really stand for anything they are constantly switching sides you know so next we have a big one okay we have marks and smarks all right another two for one for you marks are considered people who still believe that the product is non-scripted they believe everything that they're seeing they're taking it for what it is and they're essentially kind of newbies to the wrestling world now smarks are short for smart marks pretty simple and they're essentially aware that they're seeing scripted things they're aware of what goes on backstage they're typically up on the industry secrets and things of that nature so now knowing that definition and the difference between the two i hope this helps you understand the gravity of when mjf called tony khan an effing mark on live television that was a huge moment he pretty much called tony khan a newbie to the sport he called him a fan and pretty much disrespected that man on his own show on live television now that kind of plays into the next one that i'm gonna get into so next we have another twofer we have work and shoot all right so a work is pretty much something that's scripted it's a part of the program it's expected to happen at least within the production team like we all are aware that this is a part of the show on the other hand you have shoot now a shoot is when wrestlers are going off the script or they're really saying how they feel like kayfabe is broken and we are now 
essentially shooting from the hip we're saying what how we feel now examples of this would be like cm punk's pipe bomb that was kind of a work and a shoot where he was scripted to go out there and have some time to air his grievances but they also didn't know what he would say so he kind of went all over the place and just like essentially dropped his pipe bomb so that was an awesome moment another example would be like charlotte flair versus becky lynch that was definitely a work shoot type of feud just because uh, their relationship kind of soured over time in real life. So that kind of bled through in their rivalry on TV. And also Paul Heyman has some pretty good shoot promos, just like in the early SmackDown age, where we're definitely gonna have to take a look at later in the future, but bro is spitting. So next on the list, we have Spot. And a Spot is essentially a rehearsed sequence. It's a part of the program and it's usually like a high impactful move or a moment in the match that we all refer to. It's really one of the most memorable moments of the match, aside from the finish. One good example of where the spot may even outshine the finish is Edge and Christian versus the Hardys versus the Dudleys and Edge spearing Jeff Hardy in midair off of a ladder. Now, these guys have faced each other about three times in TLC matches. And I couldn't tell you who won each individual one off the top of my head, but I could tell you the spots that happened in each of those matches. So in cases like that, especially over time, you might remember the spots more than the finish, but usually and typically it's hand in hand. Like the you'll remember the match and then you'll also remember the spot. Also many spots can happen in a match like it's not just usually one big spot sometimes it is but you know some other matches have like multiple spots multiple sequences of spots like just know it's a big cluster moment of action going on that could be a spot it could also be a storyline moment where a high impactful moment just happened so the next one i want to talk about is actually what brought us to the list in the first place we have bump so contrary to what my friend John believes, it is not affiliated with drugs. It's actually the act of just taking a move, a fall, a hit, and oftentimes it's through tables, maybe a ladder, on a chair. That's a pretty hard bump. And that's the context I was referring to when talking to my friend. Christian took a pretty hard bump through a table. So a pretty simple or basic form of a bump would be like a flat back bump and wrestlers do a lot of these in training just to get their body used to hitting the mat or hitting the surface um it's really like vigorous and apparently they all describe it as like somebody just throwing cold water on their face like just waking their bodies up as far as like getting ready for the action that they're about to indulge in i myself personally did a little bit of training in MMA where we had to do about 50 just falling flat on your back, arms out, you know, just learning how to fall, land on the mat, just getting your body used to that. And those mats aren't nearly as rough and like rigid as some of these training mats that wrestlers go through. So I could not even understand or imagine just how like painful that these flat back bumps are because every wrestler that i've ever heard speak about them they are no joke especially when you're just starting to train and your body's just starting to get used to it whether you've taken some time off and you're coming back or you're starting for the first time they have all described taking that first bump as something crazy examples of some bumps that i can think of one of the first people that comes to mind is kevin owens he's always taking like a crazy bump in whatever like no dq match that he's in if there are no rules or weapons are allowed kevin owens typically is taking like a pretty sick bump every time another person that comes to mind and before everybody rolls their eyes i understand but shane mcmahon just like he's done some pretty insane bumps just throughout his career and from the point of me watching wrestling up until now, like I've 
I've seen some pretty crazy bumps and he's usually not too far away every time I start remembering bumps. So I did want to throw that in there too. Okay, so next on the list we have a turn and it's pretty simple. It's not necessarily self-explanatory, but it is a pretty simple thing to understand. It's when a heel or a face, good guy or a bad guy, switches up and does the opposite of what their character would normally do or they they kind of change sides as far as moral compass goes so a good guy could be getting beat up or maybe jumped and a bad guy in the situation kind of has a change of heart or maybe they have two of the same enemies and now the bad guy's teaming up with the good guy that's considered a turn just because now he's intended to be cheered. The bad guy is now intended to be cheered. And on the flip side, we have faces turning heel. And this is kind of like super iconic where, I mean, I, I can think of Seth Rollins turning on the shield. That was literally him turning on the shield was him turning heel as well. And then as far as a good example for a good baby face turn, um, I have Batista turning on Evolution. That was a pretty good baby face turn. Like it inevitably turned Batista into a star as well. And they got to sell a ton of merch of just the animal, Unleash the Beast. Like he was, he became a superstar with that face turn. So a promo is pretty much anytime a wrestler has a mic in their hands or in front of their face. Anytime a, a wrestler is speaking on camera and it's within the program, this is a promo. Now for a lot of wrestlers, promos are where they struggle. Okay, you could be like the best wrestler and it's typically like this where you're the best wrestler in the ring but it's hard for you to get those words together or even just connect with the crowd as far as character goes. And they let most of their speaking be done as far as their wrestling ability which is totally understandable public speaking is people's like number one fear on average so for people to struggle doing promos i i can totally understand it some good examples of like promo gods i would say are like the rock john cena stone cold like these guys always got you hyped for whatever they were talking about or you at least believed that they believed in what they were saying and that that's the making of a good promo this isn't really a rankings list but i did want to throw in some honorable mentions Sami Zayn always believed that he believes in what he's saying like no matter what every time and mick foley like he always got me pumped for whatever he was about to do as well so definitely shout out to those guys so next up we have pop and a pop is pretty much the crowd reaction a loud crowd reaction at that so some examples i have of like pops would be when chris jericho debuted that was like one of the loudest crowd reactions ever i have when triple h returned after his first knee surgery and he was in the jean jacket and he returned it that was a huge pop as well it actually made him cry a little bit that is crazy Stone Cold always generates a huge pop. No matter what he's doing, you hear that glass shatter and it's like the, the roof is blown off every time. It's pretty incredible. The Rock, if you hear that, if you smell like everybody standing up, everybody is out their seats. It's incredible to see. Next on the list, we have Heat. And this is kind of the same as a pop, but in the opposite reaction. It's more so a loud boo. And it's usually a boo within kayfabe it's a negative reaction within kayfabe where they're not booing the product they're not upset with the product they're upset with what the heel had just done and there are like small little subcategories of heat like there's cheap heat where you kind of just say something negative about whatever city you're in in order to get like the entire crowd to boo that works a ton of the time there's also cheap pops though as well where Mick Foley will say something like right here in Chicago Illinois and then he gets like a huge pop so it goes both ways and a huge example of major heat in my opinion would be anytime you see Dominic Mysterio listen to how loud the boos are from that crowd it's usually so loud that you can't hear him talking on a microphone that's how loud they're booing him so that is probably like the best definition that I could think of in recent memory for like major heat from the crowd 
Now there's also a definition of heat, which is referred to the backstage heat, where there's maybe a disagreement between one wrestler and another, or maybe one wrestler has done something to upset the entire locker room, and now he's got backstage heat. This famously has happened with The Miz, where they actually had him changing outside of the locker room. Like, he had to change in closets within the facilities that they were in because he was not allowed in the locker room this also has happened to randy orton before so it's it kind of goes into the whole people's court thing which i'm definitely going to get into in a later video so stick around for that so yeah guys that was 10 or so wrestling terms that you may or may not know i hope this helped out a lot um i know i needed this when i first got into wrestling and wanted to get into like the interviews and the backstage politics and stuff like that like just knowing these terms definitely help i'm definitely gonna make a part two because there's so much more to cover but this was just a nice fun video um all right guys so if you like leave a like if you want to see more please subscribe until next time keep it kaze